How's everyone going? Welcome back to another Comment Engine 998 Model Railway. Well, unboxing video to be more correct, and we're going to follow the new naming system. If I remember to make sure I do it on newer videos and not the uh, because I know the older videos won't have that, but oh well. Yeah, well, that's where we are at the moment. Anyways, we already know by the title, there's really no point in me ever trying to um say, uh, uh, guess the model. Uh, well, first things first is we have a grey box. <laughs> Grey box, a brown box. Let's get into it. I really do hope this is the correct side of the box. Um, but yeah, so there, so it, this literally just arrived on the day of filming. Um, unlike some of the other stuff, which I've actually had to keep around because I've had, I've had other stuff to do. But my next time not due for a little while anyway. So uh, this is the Monday of the week prior to the video upload. So this is Monday the 18th of October. So um, I actually got my packages pretty late. I did, did open upside down. Oops, so well. <laughs> um, I did get my packages a little bit later than um, some other people, so there are a lot of people who already have their models, but here we go, I finally have um, the Ixon models J-Class. Um, Ixon? Ixon? I do apologise to the guys running it if I'm mispronouncing your um, name of the company. Um, uh, I honestly not 100% sure how to um, pronounce it. So. We know what it is. Uh, being in a Victorian model railway channel, we know that it's going to be out of focus because, uh, thank you, camera. <laughs> I do have to make sure I monitor this right. Uh, uh, very, very nice artwork. Say, so, um, it's all in one length as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is locomotive J five forty nine. So uh, this is the pos the current currently the only one to stu to be in operation. Okay, okay. Um, I've switched it over to manual focus to hopefully stop that um weird focusing issue. Not suitable for fourteen years, but anyway, pretty standard warning. Um, uh, one set one eighty seven scale uh model. So. HO, HO scale to be correct, or it runs on HO double O track. Uh, Ix on, oh, in the finest. Really nice little box, honestly. It's a pretty, it seems pretty well made. <laughs> um, let's slide this off. I do have my computer running in the background, so if you hear any other various noises, I do apologize. And we have that sitting in there. Start to see that, um, yeah, so they always face that way now. I remember seeing some of the photos, they were usually facing the other way. I think it's to do with them putting some of the extra stuff into the box that they knew were possibly. Anyways, let's pull it out. It's a pretty large box for it. And let's go and deal with some of the instruction manuals. We just scroll through it now. So it's just on the front page, it's just your historical information. So, uh, and then on the back page, we have our standard sort of in things and disassembly of the. Um, uh, disassembly of the model, so for lubrication works and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, what's it called? They also have a warning here saying do not uh, that it's recommended you do not disconnect the electrical tender, uh, the ele the coupler between the tender, that electrical, uh, the ele the eight pin electrical plug that's fitted to these. Uh, if I could record an eight pin, um, it's a linear eight pin plug, which is really really interesting. Uh, they are actually pretty difficult from what I've heard, anyways, to put in. And we will have a try, have a go at putting it in in this video. Pretty regular. Uh, this locomotive has to be plugged into the tender before you can operate it. It's not like the British ones. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure even the new British ones you kind of have to. It's because they have to run through the the coder, not the decoder, the um, what do they call it. The, the basically the, the coder, the blanking plate, to for it to actually operate because that's how, a way that a lot of these model trains have now been circuited. Anyways, let's pull off the. It's a. This is this is kind of funny when I've just realised this. These are two separate boxes inside one thing, which means you try to pull on it and it just comes straight out, which is <laughs> so there's no not really much of a point to push really. So we just pull it out from each end. I'll put this to the side. All right, so that's our tender, and this is our locomotive. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna have a look at a few of the little stuff. Again, we'll have a close-up shot of these because there's no point in me trying to put it in front of the camera because the camera's not going to be in focus anyway. Um, so we've got two pieces of glazing, um, which is for which is for the cab sides because uh, the windows are set in the open position. 
Um, anyways, um, so you got your two guys, um, which is really, really nice. 3D printed from what I've heard. I think they're 3D printed. Well, it may be resin, actually. Oh, I don't know. Um, and then you got your little a uh, little pieces that you can put in. Uh, there's a hole in the back of the tender. You can either put a f fake um, headlight in or uh, a step or a um, bracket um, and headlights. So that's, that's a good noise. Uh, let's take out the um, tender. It's nice and small. There we go. Make sure it doesn't roll away. Let's just put this away somewhere else. Out of frame. That's our little tender. That's our old burning tender, obviously. So, uh, obviously, we'll have a close up in a minute. So, I'm not going to no, do any, bring it close to the camera while the, it's on the manual focus. And then let's pull this out. It's a bit hard because it's locked itself behind the cab. I see why they also. They also don't want us. Obviously, they don't want us to put it back in the box if they can't. If we can't even pull apart the locomotive, but uh, yeah, so it's a nice box, unfortunately. But yeah, oh well. There we go. So let's just bring her out. Try to bring her out without breaking anything, because uh, there's not really many places I can hold it without uh, breaking it. Especially because this is the old burning model, which means it has the um, cap on the top, which is actually glued. So uh, how am I going to get this off? <laughs> how am I going to get this out? Just pick it up there it's probably the worst place to pick it up but oh well there we go she's out and let's just uh, put this uh, drop it and put it away so there we go that's uh that's this that's j549 uh, let's move everything away uh, and uh, let's take a closer look to a uh, closer look at it all right, so we're going to do this in two components. We're going to firstly do the locomotive, and then we're going to do the tender. All right, we're back. Um, there's now a bird in the background, which uh, hopefully that's not going to be picked up too much, but oh well. Um, so yeah, there's J549. Uh, everyone may have already noticed there's already a slight little issue with the model, um, uh, that one of the buffers are missing. It's just my luck. Uh, in fact, it's actually sitting in the box, so it's obviously... it's. It's obviously it came off in transit, which is really unfortunate to think of, but a hey, sometimes postures just always go perfectly. So Ah, uh, it does also show that that is a component of worry when it comes to the way that the model's actually packed. If it's uh, they can't get thrown around. So anyhow, it shouldn't be too difficult to fit this uh, fit these back together. I just need to make sure I put that the right way around because it's got the cutout. It's not like the British ones where they have like uh, where they just circle up. I'm just going to quickly get the buffer put back on. I think it should just um, sit on nicely. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll obviously speak about it in a moment. So give me a moment, um, and we'll cut over to it now. All right, we're back. Um, yeah, it pretty much just sits in the thing. I may have to go and glue it on later on, uh, later, because you never know. You might actually come... Uh, uh, you want to make sure it stays as long as it will, so... Yeah. So we've got J549. It's the... It's one, okay, um, there are four variants of the models available. It's black sides for both coal and oil, and then red sides coal and oil. Uh, and this is the red tipped um, oil, if I got it correct. <laughs> As I just try to remember what they actually call it or whatever. Let's have a quick spin around of the engine. I obviously didn't centre the engine on the table, nor did I centre the camera on uh, on the table. Um, so first impressions, it looks really, really nice, honestly. Um, very well detailed, very comparable to some of the other British stuff, like uh, steam engines. Because I honestly don't see much um, Australian steam. This is the f one of the first Victorian steam, one of, one of, not the first, one of the first Australian uh, 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 Victorian steam made available um, in plastic uh, looks nice and it looks, it actually looks very very nice uh, she does come fitted with um, sprung buffers so that's an easy thing to already find out when I had to re re replace the buffers they are sprung buffers which is really really nice didn't expect them to be sprung either because um, again haven't played around with Australian steam locomotives ever um, so used to um, British ones being so up and down if they will or won't have those things fitted but yeah it's nice to see that they did go into the effort to put in giving us even sprung buffers 
Um, but yeah, so that's that's the locomotive. You've even got your in cab details, which are really really nice. Uh, I think the lo I'll get a pop pop a shot of that um, in the in the history section. You see a pop a shot of that. So, but yeah, so you got your it's a two eight zero wheel arrangement. Um, yeah, it looks pretty. It looks very nice. So first impressions, it's a very very nice first impression. Let's quickly um. Just have a look at a quick look at the tender, and then we'll go into its history. All right, I hope it's not going to move. Uh, this room is built on a slight tilt, or at least the table is. Uh, so um, anything that doesn't have a motor does roll quite a bit. It's really annoying, uh, but oh well. Anyways, let's have a quick spin of the, ter uh, the, um, the uh, of the tender. As we can see, we've got your specialized eight-pin linear a linear eight-pin plug. Um, not the easiest to fit from what I've heard, so we'll definitely give that a go. Um, yeah, it looks nice. Uh, it's a lot different to the coal burner, which is empty. Uh, the tenders are empty on the coal burner, which is kind of funny. Uh, obviously, it's up to us to put our own coal in it, but it just kind of looks funny running it without um, any coal. Would be running it without coal, but this one is the oil burner, so it's got a tank behind it, so it's already different in so And you can see there's a little uh, lamp iron uh, thing. Um, for where the um, lamp, uh, where those little details go. Uh, the model uh, is fitted with shunter steps. Those shunter steps are post 1950s uh, and pre 1980s because no model, no locomotive in heritage have um, shunter steps fitted anymore. Exceptions may apply, uh, but they have been removed in real life, same as the handrails. So that's um, these are actually these models are based on the post 1960s, 1950s, 1960s look when they were utilized as shunters in yards. So yeah, um, it's got pretty much the detail, all the detail that we really need um, for uh, for something you would expect for a almost six hundred dollar is six hundred dollar model. Um, something that obviously we have to check again. Yes, she does. She should have sprung buffers on the rear as well. She's got some very nice scale size uh, knuckle cup, uh, scale size KD couplers. Um, these are the yeah, these are the scales, not the um, number fives, the big, the big chunky things, the ones I don't like. And of course, we have proper uh, proper rotating bogies. That, it's just, it's funny that I have to say that, knowing that there's a model on the market which doesn't have one. Anyway, so uh, I think. It's time. I'll go and stick them both onto the um, thing. Uh, we'll go through its history and then um, go and have a closer look at the model. So, time for its history. Alrighty. So, the Victorian Railway's J Class locomotives were built between 1953 and 1954 by the Vulcan Foundry. 60 locomotives were constructed, half of which were coal burners and the other half, which were oil burners. Initially, actually, if I recall, about um, I think it was like 50 were originally ordered, but because the VR went along and handed like 10 of the N classes over to the South Australian Railways, they ordered a few extra. I think there was about 10. Um, not a hundred percent sure because uh, I didn't actually check that. <laughs> Oops. Uh, anyways, so they were development of the Victorian Railways K class, which entered service in 1922. They were ordered as part of Operation Phoenix, a program which was initiated in 1950 to upgrade and rehabilitate the railway network after World War II. The first J-Class locomotives entered service in 1954 and stayed in service until 1972. I forgot to, to say that they, though they were built in the Vulcan Foundry, the Vulcan Foundry was in Britain, so these were imported locomotives. So they were one of two classes of locomotives due to the end of steam that were, were ordered uh, internationally, being th these being the R classes and the J's. Initially, they arrived around the same time as the diesel locomotives, which inevitably, inevitably would have replaced them. These being the, the T class branch locomotives. For this reason, they would end up being the last steam locomotive to enter service, and eventually the last steam locomotive to be in service. The J's were classified as light freight locomotives. However, they did operate passenger services. This meant that they were able to travel down uh, most of the branch lines in the network. They could be seen running any, basically any services down those branch lines and even some secondary mainline uh, services. In their final years, some were relegated to shunting duties, uh, resulting in additional shunter steps to be fitted to the tenders. After only 18 years of service, 
it was fitting that the final lo steam locomotive to be operated would be a, uh, a J-Class locomotive, being locomotive number J550. 11 locomotives made to preservation, with three of them being operational in some point in history within the preservation era. Most have been statically preserved in parks, with three set aside for possible future restoration, these being J's 512, which is currently in Seymour being converted to standard gauge, J516, which is in Hillsville, uh, in pieces, uh, pretty much is only a boiler, and J536, which is with 707 operations. Today, only J549 is in operation. Uh, and is currently operating with the Victorian Goldfields Railway. J515 and 541 are in different stages of restoration, but will hopefully be back on the tracks very soon. Alright, so I was supposed to go through the features list first, and I just realised that I hadn't. So we're just going to quickly go through the features of the J, which is specified on most of the pages that talk about the model anyways. Uh, so, here we go. Let's have a look. So, some of the features of the model, as, as specified, is um, they have a cast metal boiler footplate and chassis. They have a 40 to 1 gear ratio, gearing ratio, uh, sprung buffers, genuine KD couplers, pickup from all wheels, all all driving wheels and tender wheels, which is, means we should have very good electrical conductivity, uh, scale metal coupling rods, uh, a minimum radius of 24 inches. I will have a chat about that um, on the layout because um, that's going to be a little bit interesting if it's a minimum radius of 24 inches. Uh, they are DCC sound ready uh, with the 21 pin socket in the tender. Uh, and they have uh, etch fire irons and uh, yeah, etch fire irons with the coal burner version, which this is obviously the old burner version. So that's that's where that little piece came from when I saw the photos on their uh, Facebook page. Anyway, so let's uh, let's take a quick zoom in at some of these details. Uh, and I put the um, arm back on the um, camera so that we can actually properly maneuver the camera a little bit. So we've got, as we say, we've got our eight driving wheels, our two eight oh wheel arrangement. Um, uh, the rods. Nice, they're nice, uh, they're, and even the wheels they look really nice. Um, you've even got the metal polish finish. I don't understand that those usually get dirty quite um, early, but they kind of have to be for conductivity reasons. Uh, obviously, you can weather it if you want to. I'm not going to weather it, uh, it kind of looks nice uh, as it is. I'm um, preservation era, as I say. We've uh, uh, got our, um, our air compressor. No markings on the air compressor, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if they did have any in the real life. I haven't played around with the J's that much in real life, being seeing that there's only one that's mainline operational um, uh, since I started doing a lot of this railway stuff. But yeah, anyways, uh, sorry, I'm not unlocked the camera. We've got our two smoke deflectors. Uh, I heard a word a lot of people say that they're a little bit thick. I don't fully see anything wrong, but. Uh, yeah, you can see the headlight. The headlight works. It has got directional headlight, uh, a directional headlight, so it comes towards you. No lights on the way back, though. Um, and there's also marker lights on the back of the tender, which do operate as well. Let's go down off the model, so we can have a look at our buffer beam. Uh, not too much on the buffer beam in terms of detail. You've got your uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, bleh, 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 your uncoupling round, uh, hooks, and you've got your number and your class. Obviously, these are just stickers, uh, not stickers. Uh, whatever they call them, uh, things. They aren't uh, proper etch number plates. You can purchase your own number plates if you feel to do so, uh, but they're not etch. That's just uh, uh, that's the front of the J. Looks all pretty much like as you would expect for a model worth this much. They've done a brilliant job on uh, on uh, on making sure the model looks correct. You've got your little builder's plates on the side of the cab. Not the cab, what am I talking about? The um, sides of the, whoopsie, sorry about the focus, on the sides of the, uh, the, the, the deflectors, the smoke deflectors. So these use, I forgot what the type of smoke deflectors are. If I can find out, I will say, but uh, and you'll see a pop-up on the screen now if I remember uh, if I when I find out um, uh, 
people just nickname the German style of motor practice. You've got all your nice little side on de details on the side. You've got your reverser. Uh, you got your handrail going down the side of the engine, which looks really nice. You got your whistle and your two safety valves moving down back onto the wheels. You got your very nice motion again. You can see the pickups on behind the wheels. Your copper pickups. Uh, I understand why they uh, they are there. Um, usually most uh, Hornby locomotives would uh, have those blacked out um, with um, black paint. I might actually give that a go uh, one day, obviously when it's uh, out of warranty, but uh, yeah, it's got those. It's moving over to the side of the engine, we've got a number plate on the side of the um, cab, and you've got your stuff exchanger, because these engines were fitted with stuff exchangers. So yeah, that's, uh, again, you can have a look at the, I'll um, oh, have a cab, uh, a proper photo of the cab, cab detail pop up now. Um, though, and so there's actually a pretty nice amount of cab detail in the cab. Again, not 100% sure what's correct, I haven't fully been in a J's cab before. Even though this is in Heritage, I've only mainly been in Steam, uh, what's it going, coal burners, not oil burners, but yeah. Uh, nice, tender detail. You got your walk. Uh, you got your handrails all up the top. Uh, again, you've got your let's your. You've got your shunter steps. These are, as I say, are inaccurate for any heritage or even original. Um, when they first arrived, they weren't fitted with shunter steps. To the back of the tender, we have our number plate again, uh, and the hole where you to put that extra piece of detail. All three of those marker lights work, if I recall. Our scale size couplers again, working sprung buffers, and yeah, so really, really nice detail. Love the look of it. We can see that the handrail on this side looks a bit tipsy turvy for some reason. I think something's off about that. And we're back on the other side of the locomotive, so there we go. Nice looker, uh, nice looker, most. Mostly fully uh, uh, as correct as it can be for a again a plastic uh, plastic model, um, but yeah, it's for what it is. It's really really nice. It looks very uh, like it's worth what it's um uh, what we pay for it. Um, yeah, so we're gonna quickly have a look at how the heck to um couple up the uh, the electrical stuff on the tender, and then we'll jump over to the layout to give it a run. Uh, we